Well, hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Scout Tactical Channel. So today I'm here with Taz and we're building the 308 DPMS Oracle Rifle. Here we go. Okay, so we have the DPMS 308 Oracle. As you know, these are great values. This gun is normally 850, 899, depending on where you find it. You won't find another 308 with this quality at that price, an excellent gun. But we have a whole bunch of stuff, as you've seen in the past, for a custom build that Taz has gotten. This is Taz's rifle. So really good stuff. I walked through it from end to end. So we're going with a Hogue stock, a Hogue grip with the finger grooves, which I like, and the extra texture. 45 degree iron sights that can ride on top. A Ruger trigger, it's just displayed in this little housing, but of course it'll come out of there. Uh, we've got some P-Mags, here's the original metal mag that came with it. We've got a uh, low profile gas block here, Magpul MS4 sling, Magpul AFG, the angled foregrip two, some ammo, uh, an XTS, key mod four in, free float four in, and a Nikon Pro staff what is the power on that? Three to nine, Three to nine by 40 yep. scope. This is an armorer's wrench that Taz also bought. Did I say the P-Series scope no. mount? Okay, and an Icon P-Series scope mount. So all good stuff. Most of this stuff you've seen on other rifles that I've built as well. These are my choices too. These are good stuff. Um, I like Magpul, I like Nikon, I like all this stuff. So um, let's get to the build. So the sling is gonna be kind of superficial. We can put that on afterwards, so we'll move it out. The mag, same thing. We'll make some room to work. Um, and we can start from here. So when you get into the simplest stuff, of course, it's unloaded because I can see all the way through it. Here it is. It's held open. If you guys can see that, I can put my finger in there. There's no mag. There's nothing like that. It's a brand new rifle. Just came out of the box, but we still check it. No round in the chamber. So one of the easiest fixes is, of course, the stock. If you know, you just pick up on, pick up real far on the lever right and it'll come right off okay so we'll move the stock this is a mil spec um but uh stock and this is a commercial tube sweet <laughs> okay same same, same thing happened to me with the wrench okay yeah yeah it could mm -hmm. go but it's gonna be a time mother it wouldn't be one that you could easily. Maybe it's just got a little over molding on there. Let's see. No, it's, it's not happening, brother. Really? It's a mil spec stock. It needs to be a commercial stock. Mm -hmm. There's two sizes. Yeah, people ought to know the selling it to you. Yeah, there you go. You tell them. So, uh, pretty common deal. The stock that they sold him at the store looks great. It's mil spec. The tube is going to be commercial. So the stock doesn't fit a little bit too tight. We could probably jam it on there, but that's just useless. So an easy fix, cause you can slap that on in the truck, you know, in yep. the parking lot. We'll go, we'll put this back on. Okay. Okay. On the grip, normally, all right, Allen wrenches. So this one is a Allen wrench. Some of them are screwdriver. You never know. Well, it's much smaller than that. Okay, this one happens to be a 3 16 Allen wrench. Which we'll probably have to. Nope, I got it. All right. We'll talk about the grip. I'm sure you guys know this stuff um, from building your own rifles, your custom rifles. But there are some springs and little uh, indents in here, okay? So the screw's loose and it's in there, but I'm gonna take that off. But, um, if you see right here on the rifle, yeah, right here we have a spring. That's the screw. We have a spring doing the 
uh, rear pin and then we have a spring right here doing the tension on the safety so you can't let these just fly out and there's a little detent in there as well you don't want to lose that stuff many people including myself have had to go buy new ones so i just kind of work it off like that and know that it's a spring and we're good so you see that one right and then there's the other spring so the back one is actually the gold one and it's longer we'll remember that I think if we flip this over, there it is. So there's the little detent that goes up in there. Okay. So there's all our parts for that. Just kind of test it out there. So it to be the same thing. No, fits fine. There's only one group. <laughs> okay. So we are going to do our. We'll tilt it this way so you can see. So we're going to do our little detent in the hole. We're going to do the silver spring in the front. Right? The spring fell out. <laughs> this is going to be nothing but a bloopers video. That's all right. You want to make sure everything's going into the holes. And they did. Can I still operate the safety? Yes. If it's real uh, mushy or it doesn't have that click to it, we have a problem. Is there still tension on the rear spring, rear uh, push pin? Oh yeah. See how that is? Mm -hmm. And it has a detent in there too. My shoulder just popped. Okay, so I think we're good there. He said, Taz said he may spray paint this thing tan or something, which is cool. Okay, so the biggest thing in the build that we're gonna have to do. Triggered. No, that's the easy. Mm -hmm. The forearm oh, is man. worse than you would think. So let's see what comes in this package. So that one turned out to be a 932nd. We're just loosening this up so I can take the barrel nut out. They've got a barrel nut stuck in here. Does it fit it? Try the other one. Okay. Normally you can use a vice block. I don't have a vice. I do have a block, <laughs> but I, I did that at my, when I did my last one, my MMP 10, I did it at my brother's auto shop and used his vice. So without that wrench, an armorer's wrench, yeah, you don't have any dice. It's not coming off with just pliers or some kind of rig that you do the delta ring really needs a wrench you got it leave the washer yeah. or no will the washer come off yeah and you don't have to pull the barrel off you don't have to disassemble the delta ring for any maintenance or anything like that okay with the the old hand guard was off with the delta ring off let's go ahead and start the gas block the gas tube and the gas block so we had to get the old one out You'll spend most of your life trying to twist that. To take the gas tube out of the uh, gas block, you can buy another gas tube to reuse it, which is fine. You need a punch. I used some Lyman gunsmith punches, um, and they didn't work worth a crap on that MP10 build. So I bought these Sterrett punches, which are supposed to be bad to the bone. And in fact, they did the job. So normally, Smith & Wesson pins only come out one way because they're tapered. Oh, oh Jesus! <laughs> Woo! Okay, so we need to it down next to the Right, so with the pin driven out, which is here, which is not an easy task, then with some pliers and some spinning, we finally get the gas tube out of the gas block. Now again, you can use uh, a whole new gas tube. You don't have to reuse that thing. 
so on the rifle there's a hole and it's got to let in air on the gas block inside there there's a hole and it's for the air there you go it started to go okay blow through that end we're good came through the gas tube okay so the pins in the tubes in tubes in the thing it's far enough down and it's seated correctly through this hole so now we do the little wrench it little you're the expert well i don't know about that more than deny <laughs> that's why i'm here to learn okay why did that one go in further than that one i don't know there was that contour in the barrel okay okay so we got that on we got the barrel nut on now we would slide the fore end on You know what? I wouldn't put this in. Because it's the same as you have. How's that? Okay, so while he's setting that up, we've been talking about this trigger. It's the Ruger Elite 452 AR trigger. I like it. It's nice, but you can test it here in the package. It's two stage. It's four and a half pounds. Well, that's what the factory one is. It says it's a 30% faster reset, but I don't see that. Um... It says it's a lightweight hammer, but it's a 308, so it really doesn't matter. I'm thinking we don't put this in because, you know, triggers are no problem. It's two pins on the lower. Pretty easy to do, but I don't know this would gain a lot of advantage. And at 139, maybe he just gets a refund for this. That's what I'm thinking for real. Okay. You're the boss. It does look mean, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. So we'll put this back on the rifle and we'll use your armorer's wrench. Put it back on the lower part. Oh, yeah. And that'll give us a little, little holding torque. Good. All right. Okay, so we're done with modifications. We've got things like the sling and the um, scope, and things like that. So let's start knocking that stuff around. Okay, sling mounts in there. We'll go with the scope mount, I guess. And the scope. Those things still sealed. There we go. It's a good looking scope. Yeah, I like it. Pro staff, okay. Look, look there, it's pretty clear. Yeah, we will. That's a two-piece. I have that. This is a P223 mount. I have the Nikon M223 mount. It is a one-piece. Hmm. Kind of cool. Before we put the ring, the pins back through, the screws back through. We'll kind of see where we are on the scope. And we want to leave room for the rear sight, right? Yes. So I'm pretty much perfect there. Didn't take much. No. So the rear sight will be here. And it'll clear too. Will it clear the bell and scope? We shall see. Okay, so we'll put the screws back through here. Okay. We'll go ahead and throw down on this guy. Got a screw. Do you use the forward assist? Well, yeah, but you can still get to it. 
you don't really use them. But no. No. So you have that there. On that ring, it clears the forward assist and it clears the charger handle. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, is that wrong mm -hmm. or nothing? Good. Tight. Yeah. So you're going to want to, don't snug the other side, right. right? They're both about half and half. Mm -hmm. We'll tighten this side. We'll have it slightly canted over a little bit so that we can check it out. I will use my vise. What we'll do is, I have two levels. I put one up here. I put one on the rifle to see what's going on there. And there's no great spot on the AR. Now you level the scope. You get it too tight? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, I'll just snug that side. Not all the way now. What's it look like? Perfect. Of course it is. <laughs> Normally it's not that easy. Okay, so we'll give it one little tug on the opposite side. And then we'll cross it up there. Now we'll look again. That last little tug can pull it off every time. Sometimes I don't have to redo it a million times. Nope, it's good. Okay, we're on. Okay, we'll put the front side on. And that's really it. So, you know, all in all, we probably spent an hour on it. We did have to go out to the shop and torque it. The stock that Taz bought was not the correct one. We can go exchange that. The trigger really didn't give us any benefit. So let's refund that and maybe put in, you know, if we want to go with something, maybe a, a nice... Um, Chip McCormick, you know, which is CMC triggers. You could go with uh, um, a Geisley, something like that. You know, there's a lot of a Timney. There's a lot of one-piece drop-in triggers. Right. When you see the two pieces, although I have a nice two-piece or multi-piece Geisley, um, usually your nicer ones are one-piece, something to look for. And it's just a drop-in unit. Either way, they're easy to install. But, you know, today's GI triggers are not too bad, especially for a hunting rifle. And that's what this is. If, I, if we didn't say that already, Taz is going to... Uh, some public land here in Texas uh, at spring break week. And so tomorrow or Sunday, he's going to go pig hunting. And that's is what's going with him. So we have the stock will be replaced. The, the uh, Nikon Pro Staff scope, it's a 3 9 by 40 Nikon P-Series P223 mount, which was nice. We have the Hogue Grip, which I love. The XTS 4N, which is key mod, which is cool. And it has a quad rail up here just a little bit. We have the XTS 45 degree sights, super cool. Everything went together pretty good. We had a little hill with the pin in the gas block. I've never done an AR where I didn't have a little hill with the pin in the gas block, so it's normal. We did have to go torque down the barrel nut, which is pretty normal stuff. Um, there was already some Loctite on the bottom of the gas block, in case you're wondering, so I didn't add any more to that. And I think we're good to go. So what do you think of the rifle? Ready to fire. I think it looks mean. Yep. All right, guys. So. As always, keep the views and subscriptions coming. I appreciate it. Remember, Scout Tactical is part of a three-channel network. We have Scout Tactical with the guns and gear, Scout Prepper with the emergency preparedness stuff, and Scout Hunter. Check them all out on the new website that's coming, scouttactical.com. And as always, thanks for watching. All that hoopla, it's going to be like a two-minute video. Just cutting <laughs> through it all, three camera batteries. If I level the base, don't drop that. Okay. Like a gazelle, I'm in.